It's a light that I might see. Give me the world. It's my total victory over every situation. Give me the world. Give me the world. It will make it plain and clear to me. Give me the world. It's a light. Give me the word. It's my total victory over every situation. Give me the word. It's been tested. It's been tried. Searching minds are satisfied. Though the story's old, the message still is true. It's been ridiculed. It's been shamed. Still, its power is never changed. It will stand the test forever. Give me the word. Give me the word. We'll make it plain and clear to me. Give me the word. It's a lie. That I might see. Give me the word. It's my total victory. Hello, church. Happy Sunday. My name is Rose. I'm a minister here. It is so good to see all of you. <laughs> Yeah, way to sit in the front. That's good. Good to see you too. Um, it is a joy to be with you today. If you're visiting with us today, we have a gift for you at our Welcome Center or for those gathering with us online, if you text the word GUEST to 705-805-6441, we'd love to send you that gift as well. Just a couple of announcements. Monday nights, we have our regional-wide worship nights where we gather together with churches across the city uh, and worship Jesus together and we pray for our city. Come and join us. It's been an incredible time every Monday 7 p.m. Tomorrow night we have Valley Pentecostal Church leading us in worship, so come join us uh, as we lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Wednesdays, uh, we have corporate prayer in the afternoon at 1 p.m., and in the evening we have Bible study, and this week we're starting a brand new study called The Awe of God. Um, by John Bevere. Yes, it's an incredible study. We're excited about it. It's six weeks long, starting this Wednesday, 7 p.m. It is for everybody. Uh, we have men, women, we have teenagers that come out. We break up into groups often. Uh, and so it's just an incredible time to study God's Word, to go deeper. Uh, incredible time if you have questions about the Word of God, if you have questions about God. It's a good time to have discussions about it. So come go deeper in your walk with God uh, every Wednesday night with us. Um, yes, if you have any questions, you can come see me afterwards. If you are able, stand with me. Um, children, you are released. Thank you, Miss Joy. Uh, ages 5 to 10, kids, you can go with Miss Joy. Uh, and everyone else, I'm going to pray and we're going to worship the Lord together. Father, we thank you for the opportunity where we can gather together to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. We thank you for uh, your word, Lord God. We pray that you prepare our hearts to receive your word today. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for uh, what you are about to do in this service. And we thank you for the opportunity where we get to worship you and pour out our love on you today, God. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. We thank you for the cross, Lord God. We thank you for sending Jesus so that we can live with you forever. Would you reveal yourself in a greater measure to each one today, especially those that don't yet know you or want to know you more, Father? Reveal yourself to them, Lord God, that they would know that you are a God that loves them unconditionally. And Lord, we thank you for everything that you're about to do. We give you all the glory and praise, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we have a guest worship with Brooke Nichols, so let's worship the Lord together. It is so 
good to be with you worshiping together. I want to read to you out of Psalm 145 today. It says that I will exalt you, my God and my King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and I will praise your name. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Come on, let's lift our voices together and praise his name today. I sing praises. I sing praises to your name. Praises to your name. The name that's so much higher than all names. Sing all honor to your name. Let's lift them up together. Sing, be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. And I sing for to your name, praises to your name, the name that is so much higher than all names, oh we sing all as we sing your name is life your name is hope hope inside of me cause your name is life your name is hope inside me hope inside me cause your name is love a love that always finds me Your name is life, your name is hope inside me, hope inside me, cause your name is love, a love that always finds me, always finds, oh your name, your name is life, your name is Hope inside me, hope inside me, cause your name is love. 
do do that today. We do lift him higher in every heart and every home. Thank you, Father. We praise your name. We want to sing uh, what may be a new song to you today. And this is one that we've been worshiping to over the last uh, number of months. You know, it just sings of God's faithfulness and his generosity towards us because he's such an awesome God and he is worthy of our praise. Sing this with us. Thank you, Lord. Sing, you call the sun. You call the sun to rise. And you lay it down to Hold this heart of mine, amen. And you hold my every breath. Such an awesome God, so mighty, so holy, so wonderful. Such an awesome God, so Selfless, so generous, so faithful you are. Amen. Seated in majesty, sing reigning in holiness, reigning in holiness. The table is set. For me, for you are the living bread, such an awesome God, so mighty, so holy, so wonderful, such an awesome God, so generous so faithful you are oh he is faithful he is faithful every day he is faithful he is faithful every day and nothing comes close to the Lord oh my and nothing as sweet as his love and mercy and nothing comes close to the Lord Almighty and nothing as sweet as you love and mercy and nothing comes close to the Lord Almighty and nothing as sweet as His love and mercy. Oh, nothing comes close to the Lord. Almighty and nothing as sweet as Your love and mercy. There is nothing as sweet as you. Sing Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God. Hung on a cross. 
hung on a cross to die but not even death itself could hold you down for you rose to life such an awesome god so mighty so holy so wonderful yeah such an awesome god so selfless so generous so faithful you are such an awesome god so today so holy amen so wonderful such an awesome God so selfless so generous so faithful you are you are an awesome God so God, we thank you. We thank you for your generosity to us day after day and your faithfulness that meets us every morning. God, we lift you high and exalt your name with our praise today. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's continue to worship together. Sing, I cast my mind to Calvary. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on the cursed tree. body bowed and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone praise God Come on, let's lift our voices together. Sing, oh, praise. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Third, at break of dawn, the sun of heaven rose again. Oh, trample death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, praise Him. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Yeah. 
Come on, wherever you're at today. Let's lift our voices together. Let's turn our eyes to Jesus together and declare that he is worthy of our praise, the highest praise, the endless praise that echoes into eternity. Let's lift our voices and sing, oh, praise the name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Oh, praise the name. Oh, praise the name. Timothy says Thank you. to the king eternal immortal invisible to the only God be all of the glory and all of the honor forever and ever and ever so we lift our praise to you and we give you all the glory and all the honor we thank you Lord for your presence in your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Lord, we do enter your courts with thanksgiving and your gates with praise, Father. Lord, we just take a, a moment right now, just as an expression of our faith, an expression of our thankfulness, an expression of our expectation, Lord, of the good things that you're doing and going to do in our lives. Can we just give a praise offering to the Lord right now? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's none like you. There's none like you. And Father, as we praise you, we thank you. Now, if you're comfortable, I'd like you to join hands with the person next to you right now. In the name of Jesus, as we pray. You know, we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit would just flow amongst us. But Lord, you know what each and every person in this house needs. Each and every person that's online. Each and every person that will be tuning in later. Father, you know what they need. And Lord, by faith right now, we thank you. We step into the eternal present of the now. That now faith is. Now we speak wholeness and restoration. Now we speak healing and deliverance. Now we speak an abundant supply. Now we speak wisdom and strength and courage. Now we speak joy into your life in Jesus' name. Father, you said that as we gather that your house will be known as a house of prayer. So Father, all the prayer requests we bring before you, those that are spoken and those that are unspoken. Those that have been sent in, Father, and those that have just whispered it. Father, we lift them before you right now. That we pray that everything that is subject to the name of Jesus, which is all things, that we pray your mighty will be done in the lives of people. We pray for family restorations in the name of Jesus. We pray for family financial miracles, Father. Lord, we, we pray, I sense, a, I sense a great urgency to pray for families right now. Father, we pray for the families, Lord. Lord, we pray for the single people. And, the, and Lord, we pray for the widowed and the widower, Father. Lord, we pray for your body right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you told us to pray for Israel. We pray for Israel right now. Lord, we pray, Holy Spirit, for all those that are in places of war, those that are hurt and traumatized, Lord. 
We pray for them, Lord Jesus, that you would bring comfort to the afflicted. Lord, we pray for the hearts and lives of people. Lord, we live in a wicked and evil world. We know that. But Father, we thank you that wherever your goodness reaches out and touches people's lives, there's hope. We're asking you to touch the lives of people with hope today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just rest in your presence right now. Whatever you might need from Jesus, just thank him. Wisdom, grace, love, mercy, a fresh start in a new day. Help, hope, deliverance, a breakthrough, answers, whatever you might need. The Bible says, ask Him. Ask Him in faith without doubting in your heart. Father, we thank You that as we pray one for another, we fulfill the great commandment to love one another. Lord, we're not praying for our needs be met, but we're praying for the person next to us, beside us, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord. You can have a seat if you would, please. Praise the Lord. Um, yeah, in a minute. Yeah, you can grab a mic. A uh, couple of things. The, we've got people all over the place. Some of you do know, some of you don't know, but... Uh, uh, Brooke and Steve are our musical missionaries, amen, those that led us in, in music this morning. Um, they are our musical ministers, missionaries, excuse me. We support them on an ongoing basis, praise God. They'll be at North Edge Church on November the 18th. Oh, I said that this morning. I don't know why. No, there must be, I said the 23rd, there must be something very powerful going to happen in November. <laughs> Amen. You must. You're, you don't want to miss November. Something's going to happen the in the month of November. The 18th, the 18th and the 23rd. But on May the 18th, 7 o'clock, North Edge, uh, they're doing a wonderful night of worship with Brooke. We encourage you, as you always do, go out and be there. It's a wonderful church. We participate in many things together. Um, also, Pastor Omno and, and Netta are down in the Hamilton area, I believe, sharing the word this morning. So, you know, we've got people all over the place. We've got missionaries out of country. And they sent word this morning that uh, they're having a great time, though they've had some challenges getting there. They, they had a full delay. They, they tried to land in the country, and there wasn't any electricity for the lights at the airport. That ought to tell you. That's how the trip started, praise the Lord. Okay, But they're having a wonderful time. They send their love. There's always neat things going on if you look in the Spirit. You know, uh, this morning we had a, a wonderful time, and I encourage you, I always suggest to people, there's two services we do, 9 and 11. And although many times there's a continuation of a message, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's never the same. I encourage you, I was talking again about fresh starts and new beginnings at the earlier service, so you can go online and listen to the earlier service. But today was really exciting because uh, we had something wonderful happen. Yes, we have an amazing God that we serve. He is so good. He is so faithful. And we live in a really wonderful time on earth, this time. We are in the end of the end times. But the Bible says, as the world gets darker, he gets brighter. And as Christians, I believe our heart needs to have an urgency to spread the gospel, to tell people about Jesus, and that they come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that he's Lord in their life. And I'm sharing this, and we have this bell. Now, I'm going to ring it in a few minutes, so without, without the explanation, you might not understand what that's about. But there is a movie, and uh, just to my recollection, it's called Ring the Bell. It's a Christian movie. And if I remember correctly, it's about young men that are kind of gathered together. It's kind of like a group home on a farm setting where they all um, have had some challenges and difficulties. They do chores. They come together, and they eventually give their life to Jesus they have a big tree with a bell on it and when they come to that point they ring the bell and everyone celebrates that so I'm going to ring the bell this morning <laughs> two people have given their heart to Jesus that we're aware of so give the Lord glory and praise this morning I, I don't think they get it you know la, la, no 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 okay. la, last night I did something I've never done before in my life 
I went to a f Sudbury Five basketball game. <laughs> Never done that before, but when I got there, and every time they scored, the place went yeah. ballistic. Do you know what ballistic is? <laughs> I mean, they just come unglued. Do you know what coming unglued is? That means some of them got up out of their chair. Okay, and they prayed. So when we talk about we have teams, different places, and different things going on, and people coming to Christ, that happened this morning. This morning at church at the earlier service wasn't very full, but two people gave their heart and life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You, you know, and, and I want to encourage you. We need to get excited about those things. Do you know what this is up here? If I could have my lovely assistant, the Miss Pastor May, the Miss <laughs> Pastor May, come and join me. Do you know what this is? Uh, what the, you know, you're probably wondering what this is. Look at your neighbor and say, I know you were wondering. <laughs> okay. But what this is, are you ready? It's a box. You know what it is? It's It's faith in a box. You know what it is in a box? It's a worship team in a box. No, you know what this is? This is a, a beautiful set of electronic drums that we were just given for the church. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Because we've been declaring, and as you know, I've said it publicly, that the Lord spoke to me a number of years ago and said there is a sound from heaven. A sound of restoration. And we don't know what that is yet because we've yet discovered it. But we've been believing God. How many know the grand piano showed up? Amen. How many know we've been believing? We said, we're going to have drums there. You know, you may not see it, but there's drums sitting there. Hallelujah. Well, here they are. Now, the only thing is, they're in pieces. <laughs> and they got to be put together. Then they have to be tuned then it has to get in sync with the other instruments. What am I saying? I'm saying that there's singers out here. There's musicians out here. You might say, I don't know if I'm ready to do that yet. So how many know it's never going to happen unless we're ready to step up to the plate? You know, and, and Pastor May, you know, we've been believing God for this to take place. And one of the things that's necessary is commitment and skill set. Everybody say commitment and skill set. Commitment and skill set. You know, one of the things when it, when it comes to music, it's an incredible place. And so we're once again, everybody say once again. Once again. We're having a fresh start. Her mic is not on or is she Am I low on? there? Yeah, there you go. I'm you need on. to hold it up. Because many times over the years, and we're talking over the years, we've done different things. We had a season when we had a full band up here. And many singers up here. You say, where are they at? I don't know. Ask the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> all right. Things happen for all kinds of reasons. Then we had a season where it was Pastor May anchored by a wonderful keyboardist. Okay. Then we've had different seasons where it was video worship. But we're, we've been believing God for the team to come back together for this time and this season. So what we're asking you to do is we're asking you to prayerfully consider... If you have a gifting, everybody say a gifting. A gifting. Okay, how many know you can't give what you don't got? Amen. <laughs> so that, that means if you have a musical gift, a musical talent, and you're willing to dedicate that talent and consecrate that talent to God, you're willing to be part of the development of a worship team. And that means it's going to take a time on another night to do that and to get it with excellence. How many know we want excellence? Amen. How many know if you have a singing gift? You know, and it, and it is a gift. Remember, I will torture you if I sing. All right? I, I love to sing, but I will torture you. So if you have a gift, and people say, oh, I want to serve the church. I want my gifts to be used. The gift can never be used unless it's brought into discipline, training, and unless it's connected. And so we're using this as an opportunity, okay, to make a statement here that the time is on us. All right, and they're going to start. I'll let Pastor May tell you. So if you're interested and you'd like to come this Thursday, April the 18th from 7 to 8.30, we're having a time of singing together, and um, we're hoping to form that worship team, so instrument and voice. So 
If that fits for you and you're interested, come this Thursday. I believe the practices are going to be Thursday, every Thursday, 7 to 8.30. Or Friday. Uh, or Friday, or we may alternate. We just have to see with our keyboardist what works best for her. So I'm really excited about this. Just personally, worship is my sweet spot. And so if that's yours too, then I really encourage you to come. And if you can't come that particular t uh, Thursday and you're interested, just let me know. Yeah, anyway. let us know. No. Yeah. Let, it, let us know because there's lots of things always going on. And uh, I also wanted to do one other thing before we get into the word. You're going to be blessed today. Um, I've asked uh, Glenn Parker to bring the word today. And one of the reasons I've done that is because it's very biblical. Um, the Bible says that when you've honored the Lord, a few, few weeks ago I had him give away the book that he wrote, Snippets of My Life. And Glenn and Linda Parker have been wonderful friends to this ministry and wonderful uh, church members of this, this body. And um, I'm going to have him share the word before he does. I'm going to make a few statements out of his book that he wrote. But before we do that, I'm going to do one other thing. Uh, can I have peace? Is Andy, is peace here with you? Okay, could you get peace? Because I'd like peace and Andy to come up front here. They're launching a new ministry for us. Uh, this coming week that you'll hear more about in the weeks to come that's going to have a tremendous effect in the city of Sudbury and the greater region. Uh, we've been working behind the scenes for many months. We've been, we've been praying about it, positioning things, getting things ready, because how many know God wants to impact the city, and He does that in, through people's lives? And... Uh, Peace and Andy have stepped up to the plate. I've seen the calling on Andy's life, and I've spent time with both of them asking that calling doesn't just come upon him, it's upon her, because it takes the commitment of their time and their life to do it, to lead it. How many know before God can do anything, he first has to find the people he can do it through? You know, one of the things that we're looking for in these days to reach all the prophetic fulfillment that God has for us as a local church body to impact both this city and northern Ontario and the world is my criteria is this. My criteria is faithfulness, dedication, and initiative with accountability. You see, and they've, they've established that. So you'll hear more about it. It's, uh, uh, I don't want to tell you all the details yet, but uh, n maybe next week we'll share more. Okay, but this week I want you just to extend your hands and pray over them. Pastor May, if you'd come up. Minister Roseland, if you'd join me. Um, we're going to lay hands on them and commission them for the launch of this new ministry, uh, Restoration Outreach Center, The Rock, to come forth in the name of Jesus. Father, <laughs> And I guess he gets to join us too. It's only rightfully so, generation. Father, we thank you that we extend our hands. We thank you for the commission, the anointing, and the sending forth of this new ministry being birthed, Father. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. It's going to impact lives and families. It's going to catch on like a wildfire, Father. I thank you, Lord, there won't be room enough to contain. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for the supernatural anointing and ability to speak into the lives of people. I thank you, Lord, for this couple in Jesus' name. And as we lay hands on them, Father, I thank you that your Holy Spirit comes upon them in new dimensions. New awakenings of new giftings and new graces, Father. Lord, I thank you for insight and wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for this. We commission them to go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Give them a hand clap. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. He just, they just got back. Andy just got back from visiting his family back home. And we've been working behind the scenes. And I know everybody's sitting here going, what's it all about? Well, you'll find out. Amen. But it's going to be exciting. It's going to be something that will meet the needs of people and cause the church to expand, increase, not just in influence, but in numbers. And, you know, I, I think one of the things that you need to understand is if God has you here, He has you here for a reason. You know, He has you here for a reason for these days that we live in. And we're looking to position things. I've never had an issue releasing people. But the one thing you understand, when I turn this pulpit over... I turn it over to people that I trust. 
I turn it over to people I know that will speak words of life into your, into your lives that have the care and concern of this body. And Linda and Glenn Parker have been part of this church family for a good, healthy season, and I've loved them, and they've been faithful in the kingdom of God for, I don't want to say how long, but a long time. Okay? And when we recognize that, the Bible says everywhere Paul went, him and Barnabas uh, appointed elders to continue to teach the word. You know, many people like to call themselves an elder in the body of Christ because perhaps they're a little older. But they've never ever submitted their lives to Christ in such a way to be utilized of Christ. They have demonstrated this in their lives. They've been part of church starts. They've been part of mission organizations. You know, we don't necessarily have an eldership per se as many denominations do in their particular body. But if you were to ask me in this house who would be one of the ones I would consider elders, it would be these folks right here, Glenn and Linda Parker. Why? Because they have a great spirit of humility. They have showed selfless dedication and commitment to the body of Christ. They have shown themselves faithful to the things of the kingdom of God. They know what the power of God is. They've served all their lives when they've had careers and in retirement to honor the Lord Jesus. They both had relationships and came to the Lord as young, young people. And just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a few things. I don't, I don't know all what Glenn's going to minister, and he's welcome to have Miss Linda join him as well. But when I turn this pulpit over, I want you to understand, I believe they have a word for us today. I'm sitting right here getting ready to write down the notes of what I believe the Holy Spirit's going to speak to me. And you know, just in the, in the quadrant of, of some of the books, snippets of my life from childhood, retirement, and beyond. Everybody say beyond. beyond. I mean, no, many people miss it because they don't see beyond. You know, and, and one of the, the chapter headings here, I like this at the top. It says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. This is a man that has had personal encounter with a healing Jesus. He knows what the healing power of God is all about. How many know that's somebody I want to speak into my life? All right. Another one is, I think we can all reckon this one. He's got a heading here that says, A Lesson Learned the Hard Way. Anybody learn some lessons the hard way? Okay, I've learned some lessons the hard way. I'm just trying to give you a glimpse into why he's going to be ministering the Word this morning. He's got another heading here. It says, Learning to Trust. How many know at each new, each new stage of life you must learn to trust you must learn to grow he's got another heading here that said God in difficult times anybody in difficult times what am I saying though he only has 40 minutes this morning to minister the word you've got a lifetime of experience you get a lifetime of depth and if we'll learn anything as a church my, my brother and my sister is this that you can be taught but there, you have to catch something. See, there's the catching of the anointing of someone's life. Meaning the essence of what God's done in their life. So as, as Glenn is ministering this morning, I want you to draw on that essence of the Holy Spirit that's speaking through him. And believe God with me that there will be some word that's spoken here that will touch you, shift you comfort you, move you into a new place with your relationship with Jesus, perhaps open up a hope. That's quite an introduction. Okay? And I don't take it lightly when I use these words. Glenn and Linda, I honor you. I honor you and value you. I esteem you in the body of Christ. Would you come forward and bring the word? Would you stand with me and give them a great big we love you? And they're going to come forth and bring the word. Love you, sir. Thank you, brother. I want to make sure you're on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I'm on. You're on. Is that in your way? No. Thank you for those, those words, Pastor. And thank you, Pastor Jeff and Pastor May, for the opportunity of sharing the word this morning. Amen. It's a privilege to be here and to be part of this assembly. A pastor was 
away one Sunday and he asked one of the elders if he would speak and he agreed to speak and uh, he wanted the audience, particularly the visitors, to know that he was, uh, he was not the pastor, he was just filling in. He said, it's like, a, uh, it's like when you break a window, you know, you, and you, you need a temporary fix. You fill it with a piece of cardboard or something. So after the service, one of the ladies was shaking hands with the, with the uh, elder, she said, Pastor, or Elder, you were not a substitute. You were a real pain. <laughs> well, I'll try not to be a pain this morning, not make it too painful. Last month, we celebrated the, the death of Christ the day that Christ died on the cross for our sins. At the same time we celebrated his death, we celebrated his resurrection, for on the third day, God the Father raised him from the dead. His, his physical body was resurrected and transformed into a celestial body. And through that, he made an appearance onto several of his followers, followers on various occasions. His physical body was not left for mankind to examine or to assess, study, test, analyze. God in his divine sovereignty saw fit that no vestige of his human body form was left on earth. What a distraction that would have been. And I can tell you that uh, scientists in particular who don't believe anything other than what they can see, hear, taste, probe, it would have been a great distraction to them. God had removed what otherwise would have been a major distraction. And yet God has ordained that we who are redeemed and our new followers of his son should constitute a spiritual body. That is the body of Christ, the church. And that as the body of Christ should be available for the world to see, to examine, and to observe. <clears throat> Many times I've wondered Are we what God wants us to be as the body, a reflection of himself on display for the world? Does the world see what they expect to see when they begin to examine and study our lives as the body of Christ? I believe we need to know how God has designed the body if we are to please him. And I'm certain that if we seek to please him as to how we exist and uh, how we function as a body, the world is not going to be dis disappointed in what they see. And so I want to bring to your attention what the word has to say about the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul draws an analogy between the body of Christ and our physical bodies. And if we could have the first slide here. First slide is taken from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through to, no, I'm sorry, there's one before that. There should be. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 12 through to 27. But as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. 
For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not of the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the whole were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God made the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, but more those members of the body which seem to be more uh, feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think are less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacketh. And there shall be no schism in the the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. That's as far as we're going to uh, uh, read in that passage. The first point I want to make is that there is one body. The church. As much as we endorse and respect the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada, it's not the body. As much as we love and appreciate our sister counterpart, Pentecostal Assemblies of God, they are not the body. And we could go on. The Baptist, the First Baptist, the Olivet Baptist, they are not the body. The Lutherans, Charismatic Catholics, The brethren, they are not the body. You may belong to all of these and yet not be part of the body. On the other hand, you may not, you may be a no name brand Christian and yet belong within the body. For the body consists not of a set of labels, but rather is made up of those individuals who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb and by the Spirit of God have been adopted into the family of God. There is only one question that we need to answer. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And if you can answer affirmatively to that question, you're part of the body of Christ. And what a glorious body it is. As the song says, "'Tis a glorious body without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb." Several years ago, I was in Eskimo Point in the Arctic, now renamed Arviet. And there was a small church there, well, a modest-sized church. It was uh, one of, uh, made up of an Inuit congregation. And uh, 
I walked in, and I was obviously not Inuit. <laughs> and they began to sing hymns, sing songs. And I realized that I had something in common with them. His royal blood now flows in my veins. And I who was wretched and poor now can sing, praise God, praise God. I'm a child of the king. I think the feeling must have been mutual because something began to happen. They sang it over and over again, much like the Newfies do, you know? They sing a song to death. <laughs> well, they sang it two or three times, and then they began to sing it in English. I looked around, and it was clear that I was the only English-speaking person in that congregation. And then something else when the pastor began to preach. He would preach three or four minutes in Inuit, and then he would give a summary, a one-minute summary, just for me. I felt so honored, so much a part of that family. I'm glad that I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod, for I'm part of the family, the family of God. And this morning, regardless of what nationality you are, or what denominational label you wear. You are either part of the family of God or the invitation is still extended to you to come and be part of that great family. There is one head Second slide there, there's one head of the body. Christ is the head. You know, I worked at the University of uh, Laurentian University for several decades, and we had a museum there, a small museum, and one of the objects of interest to practically everyone who came was a series of two-headed calves. You know what they had in common? Not one of them survived. There can only be one head to the body. There can only be one head giving non-conflicting <laughs> guidance and direction to the rest of the body. And so it is within the body of Christ. There can only be a singleness of mind within the body. Christ is the head, the only head. And our position within the body is confirmed by the fact that he holds the lordship of our lives. It's to him that we submit. The next slide, please. The word teaches the word teaches that the body consists of many members each with diverse
giftings. Different abilities, different personalities, and yet all working together in harmony and unison. God has ordained that there should be diversity and yet unity within the body, even within the local assembly. The individuals are equated to various limbs, organs, and tissues made up that, that make up our anatomical body. There are 206 bones in the body, 577 muscles in the body, millions of capillaries and blood vessels, connective tissue, four or five different types of connective tissue. And there are many, many visceral organs. Some parts of our anatomy we may be somewhat pleased with, while other parts may require more care and attention to bring them to our satisfaction. And then there are some less visible members of our physical body, which no one other than perhaps our surgeon will ever have a chance to see, like the spleen, the pancreas, the liver. And although they're not visible, they are there by design. God had placed them within us. All of these members are distinct and different, as they may be. They are essential for our existence and for the completion of the body, for they work together to ensure the well-being. There is diversity and there is unity within our physical body. The body of Christ and the local assembly, the local church, is no different. There's diversity and there is to be unity because God has ordained it that way. That's a simple reason. God has ordained it that that is the way that we function. And so within the body of Christ, within the local assembly, there may be mature uh, believers, saints, there may be brand new Christians, newborn babes. There are those that know the Lord for 40 years. There are those that know the Lord within the last 40 days or even less. In fact, there may not be only babes. There will be spiritual toddlers, juniors, adolescents, And there are those that have become mature, reproducing Christians within the body. Don't you enjoy being around the new converts? When I was in Waterloo, I taught a class of new converts. When I was in Glad Tidings, I had the privilege of teaching new converts. And again in Hanmer, over here, VPC, had a new converts class. It was such a joy to just relax in their newfound love for the Lord. The excitement, the enthusiasm, childlike faith, and trust as they reached out and they began to devour the the newly discovered truths of God's word. While the church exists for them, they also exist for the church. We need them. My friend, don't ever despise the splashes of love and affection and attention that are given 
for the new babes in Christ. In some regards, they may be the less, the less comely parts of the body and need more abundant honor bestowed upon them until they are established in the Lord. Then there are the mature Christians, those who have come to know the paths of God, who have discovered the truths of his word, who have recognized the voice of God. The body needs them, for they provide stability within the body. When a new emphasis and doctrine sweeps into town, they may be the ones that push the caution button. Oops, you better be careful. Does it line up with the Word of God? As a result, many churches have been saved from error or overemphasis. The mature believer teaches by example in their attendance to the house of God in their stewardship of resources. Mature members are being watched by the new babes who are seeking to deepen their newly found relationship with God. So be careful in your walk, and be careful in your talk. The mature present a sure foundation for our faith. The newborn's a stimulus for a renewed life and vitality within the church. Here's the one that you may appreciate. Within any church, there are those that are boisterous, and there are those that are naturally quiet. Maybe has nothing to do with spirituality. A natural characteristic of the individual. I remember one church we attended, and uh, oh, we had a, a boisterous couple. Come on, brother, preach it, preach it. They'd have their tambourines out in the worship service, clapping their hands. You'd think he was a one-man choir and an orchestra every praise service. But he encouraged others of us to come and worship, lift our hearts in praise and adoration to the Master. was good for those of us who were more quiet and conservative. We realized that if we didn't praise the Lord, even the rocks would cry out. And then in that same assembly was another couple, much more quiet and conservative. They could sit and read the word of God and dwell on the riches of his truth and become so blessed in their spirit and perhaps not even speak a word audibly. Yet when you would talk to them privately, they'd speak much about the majesty of Christ the sovereignty of God. There was a quiet serenity to their lives which spoke much about his holiness and his faithfulness. These quiet individuals were like the bones of the body. They were deep. 
silent, but strong in character. Whereas the boisterous members are more like the skin, always visible and in contact with those around them. When new converts would come to them with a deep uh, theological question that was on their mind, they're more likely to say, I really don't know the answer to that. But perhaps it isn't that important right now. Don't get yourself too worked up, too concerned about getting an answer. When it comes to theological questions like that, I'm just a simpleton. Just follow me. And then they'd say, isn't Jesus wonderful? Look what he's done for me. Look how he has blessed me. Redeem me. And so they're able to cons- to encourage the newcomers because they speak their language. Have you ever considered why there aren't churches for the boisterous and different churches for the quiet and conservative? God hasn't ordained it that way. We need both. And so, you quiet theologians, stay in the Word. We need you. You're the ones that break the bread of life to us, week by week. And you boisterous members, Just stay like you are. <laughs> You're like the skin of the body, sensitive to conditions around you and to the needs of others. The needs of others as you bump into them. You are able to reach out and touch their lives. And then there are diversities within the ministry gifts which God has placed within the church. Could we have the next slide, please? Oh, there it is. Good. Uh, He's given to some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Different gifts, diversity. These are continued in Romans uh, Romans 12, verses... uh, five to eight. I'm not going to read read those to you, but within the local church there are those who are rulers or organizers. They're natural leaders. It doesn't matter what comes up, whether it's a vocational Bible school, bus project, building project, they're there to help. They're there to organize and to give leadership. And then there are those who are followers, those who say, I'm not much good at leading, at organizing people. But if you tell me what needs to be done, I'm there. Both are needed within the body of Christ. Verse 8 speaks of givers, those who have a special ability to give cheerfully and rambunctiously. They only have to hear about some need within the church or the community or overseas missions. And they are there with their checkbook, ready to help. 
The body needs those who can give, but it also needs those who are afflicted with poverty. For the poor, keep the church humble and aware of the fact that we are to be the extended hand and heart of God to the needs of our fellow man. So there's room in the body for the rich and there's room for the poor. There are those that are exhorters. There are those that show mercy. Those that show mercy may not have a lot of philosophy, a lot of advice, but they're full of the love of God. And so when a brother or sister is hurting or despairing, they don't dump a lot of theology onto them. But they take them under their wing and they bathe them in love and understanding and mercy. There are prayer warriors, those who continue to be instant in prayer and never give up in bringing the needs of the body before the throne of grace. Such diversity in form and function within the body. I rather doubt that there's any other organization, any other establishment that exhibits greater diversity than that found within the church, the true body of Christ. The young and the old, all nationalities and denominational labels, the mature and the newborn, theologians and those who are more impetuous, quiet and the boisterous, rich and the poor, leaders and followers, All of these together within the body because God has ordained that that's the way it's to be. And yet if the church with its diversity is without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it can have a war on its hands. Diversity is naturally present within the church, but it's the miraculous work of the Holy Spirit to bring about unity and singleness of heart, which the church needs to be effective. How do you define unity? <clears throat> unity is a togetherness in peace and harmony and a oneness of purpose despite intrinsic differences or diversities. It doesn't, unity doesn't let us simply tolerate others. Unity doesn't dissolve our differences in the sense that it makes them go away. Unity lubricates and helps us not to make them a point of contention or friction. It's a oneness of heart and focus so that our combined differences contribute something more honorable more valuable than the sum of our own individualities. I was trying to think of this in terms of music. I'm not musical. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> <coughs> but we all appreciate the, the deep, rich voice of a male singer, a bass singer. I think we all enjoy the voice of a 
a good quality tenor singer. And similarly for the altos and sopranos. But my, when they come together in unison, there's a harmony there that you can't deny. The sound of a good gospel quartet. You can't beat it. Being at peace and harmony within our brothers and uh, harmony with our brothers and sisters brings not only the joy to our lives, but also to the heart of our Father. It honors Him. In fact, God places a premium on unity among the members of His body regardless of the diversity or the differences that naturally exist. Our last slide. Unity. Uh, I'm going to read this one, if I may. Um, this is a verse that has made a lot of impact on my life. Speaking of unity, behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It's God's desire. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded his blessing. We find that oil or ointment has often been symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament prophets and kings were anointed with oil. They had a special blessing upon their lives. that prepared them, that empowered them. And it will do the same for us. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down to the beard and onto the skirts of the garment. For there the Lord commanded his blessings, even life forevermore. So in closing, let me suggest this. The prototype of the church was established over 2,000 years ago. When Christ left the church, he left behind a handful of disciples. They had their diversities. Some were raw, rough-hewn fishermen. Others had the skills of Revenue Canada. (laughs) 
tax collectors. His last instructions were that they should go to Jerusalem and tarry in the upper room in one accord until the Holy Spirit was outpoured upon them. As they received the promise of the Spirit, they were united in heart and in purpose. The love of God filled their hearts to the point that the outside world looked upon them and noted that they had been fought, that they were followers of Christ because they were a united body showing love one toward another. John chapter 15, uh, 13, I believe it is, it says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one for another. God blessed the unity and the singleness of heart of this early church. And he added to the church daily such as should be saved. For there the Lord commanded his blessing, where there is unity among the brethren and sisters. We are the body of Christ, which God has left here on display for the world to see. It's us that they should be able to examine and see Christ in us. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the clarity of your word that teaches us, Lord, how we are to live. Lord, your church is not a building. Your church is not a collection of people. But it's a living organism. A living organism designed and ordained by yourself. Washed and kept pure by the application of the blood of the Lamb for which we give you thanks. And it's empowered by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that you would help us to live lives that exude the goodness of God and the fact that you have ordained us <coughs> to live in peace and harmony with one another. Amen. Amen. <coughs> There we go. Um, anyway, I want you to, you said togetherness, okay, is in peace and harmony. And what was the second part of that when you were talking about unity? Um, oneness of focus. Um, definition yeah, definition of unity. Oh. When you said uh, one was together in peace. And then you had a second part that I didn't get there. Okay, let me check my notes here. My memory is short. <laughs> but your notes are long. Yeah, they are. I'll give you a sec. You, know. uh, you have to forgive me for my notes here. Thank God you can I read them because I can't. <laughs> Did you receive something this morning? Yeah. You know, uh, amen. I, I, I think one of the most important things... Do you find it there? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. 
unity is of togetherness and peace and harmony and oneness of purpose. Okay. And one oneness of purpose despite our intrinsic differences or diverse diversities. Despite our differences. And the big word he used. <laughs> intrinsic differences. I know what it is. Yes. And diversities. And diversities. You know what makes it so important? Every word he said, he's lived. You know, you only learn how to be in unity when you've been in a place with a bunch of people. And you've stayed there, and you've learned to love people. You've learned to let each one be who they are. Can we give Glenn a great big... Love you, sir. Amen. What a, what a, great, what a great job. Appreciate it so, so much. And I encourage you, you know, take the time to get to, get to know him. They're wonderful people. And look at that person next to you and say, I think you're pretty wonderful too. You know, any boisterous people in here? Woo! Hallelujah, that's me. <laughs> any quiet people in here? That's me. Okay. You know, it's okay to be you is what he was saying this morning. How I many know it's okay to be you and not everybody's going to be changed in the same way to do the same things? And I think the message this morning is about how really wonderful it is when the body is the body. That we accept one another, we love one another, that we learn to allow the gifts within us to be utilized in the body. I've got a, you don't know me, but that's about six months worth of teaching I could do on that. You know, because I'm the guy that rides down the road and pull out a napkin and write three words down about, May will go, what's that? And I said, that's my sermon for tonight. So when I write down a whole list of things, it's a lot of things for me to think about. Thank you for depositing into the body the spirit of faithfulness, dedication, commitment, the spirit of longevity and stability. And I, and I love that. Mature believers. For those of you that would consider yourself mature, listen to this, these words again. A mature believer provides stability, provides an example, attendance, stewardship they're a sure foundation on which we can build thank you for those that are mature that makes all the difference and don't look around and think just because you've been around a while you're mature how many know maturity is taking place as we grow in the lord amen and so i think somebody else deserves a great big hand and that's you so give yourself a great big hand hallelujah amen you know, I was listening to Lester Summerall the other day. Lester Summerall was 85 years old when he was delivering the message that I was listening to. And he said, when I started, I was an... an, an uh, he said, now I'm an encourager, but when I started, I was an exhauster. He said, I just wear them out. How many have been encouraged today? I've been encouraged today. And we're going to take communion today together and uh, we're going to close out this morning. So Father, we just thank you for coming together around your word and as your people. We thank you for communion, Father. A place to join together in our faith. We thank you, Lord, that as we open these elements up of the bread and the juice, that Father, together we stand here as a body, as a family. Lord, we examine our heart. It tells us that if there's anything in our heart that's unforgiving, that we would forgive. And so we do just that right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, it says that the bread represents your body. And so, Father, we lift this up to you. We thank you that it says your body was broken so that we may be made whole. We take and break this bread in the name of Jesus, and we eat of our wholeness. Don't rush by your wholeness, is what the Holy Spirit just said. If you'll meditate and reflect on the Word, if you'll meditate and reflect on Jesus' brokenness, you'll see some wholeness. He said, don't rush by it. Think about it. Meditate on it. We take the cup. <clears throat> Represents your blood. The fruit of the vine. It also represents a new wine. A new freshness today, that we can walk in a new revelation of the body. 
a new revelation to celebrate diversity and walk in unity a new revelation of that we each have a purpose here a new revelation that we're all growing up in a different places and Lord that we would accept your call in the place in the body that we are Father, we thank you for the blood that unites us, the blood that cleanses us, the blood that purifies us, the blood that makes us of one. And so, Lord, we bless this cup and we take and drink in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I got my message while I was sitting here listening to Glenn for next week. I wasn't sure what I was going to preach, but you said it. There's a, there's a commanded blessing from Psalm 133 that comes into our life. And my message next week is going to be on the commanded blessing. So I encourage you, come out, love one another. Thank you for your tithes, your offerings, your giving. Uh, we'll celebrate. We've, we're coming up on $22,000 paid into the... Uh, uh, there you go, 21,580. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise the Lord. You know, spring's on us. We want to get that done, get it accomplished, and move on. Praise God. Um, bless somebody. Love somebody. If there's somebody here you don't know, introduce yourself and say, Hi, Mrs. Wonderful. How are you doing? Okay, and she'll say, Hi, Mr. Handsome. How are you? <laughs> You're supposed to say hi, Mr. Wonderful. Okay. I'm creative. Okay, anyway, stand to your feet, bless somebody, love somebody, and always remember this. Jesus is risen. Victory is assured. <laughs> Make it plain and clear to me. Give me the word. It's a light that I might see. Give me the word. It's my total victory over every situation. Give me the word. Give me the word. Though the story's old